I believe that Terrarians often speedrun the game and never take their time on their worlds. I want to change that, so over the course of a year, I will be playing on this one world, with each stage of progression being blocked until the start of a new month. I'm doing this so I can seriously take my time in each stage of Terraria Calamity Mod's progression and see what it has to offer. So for the month of February, I am only allowed to defeat the Eater of Worlds, Branding Cthulhu, Hive Mine, and Perforators. Otherwise, I can make no other form of progression. This is what happened. The beginning of the second month, and I'm able to get into it with all that I learned from the first month. Sure, I've done this challenge before, but now that I'm in Calamity, things have changed quite a bit, and I have to change my mindset a bit as I figure out how to go about learning more about what this mod has to offer. The first week was less affected by what I learned as the new bosses have just been unlocked, but it did still have an impact. The first and most obvious task was to break a Shadow Orb. This will allow the Goblin Army to spawn, and once they're defeated, I'll be able to find the Goblin Tinkerer and finally merge some of my accessories. I could have broken the orbs and gotten straight to fighting bosses, but after last month, I figured it would be smart to not rush to each of the bosses, but spend some time in between each of them. I think this fits the challenge much better. After all, it's not meant to be a boss rush and then figure out what to do from there. So let's see what there is to keep myself occupied for now. Fishing quests are definitely an important task to keep performing as failing to do fishing quests early in the game can really bite you in the rear later in the game. Turns out Calamity also increases the number of things you get from fishing quests, so this will be considerably easier than it is in vanilla. Before fighting any of the bosses, I thought it would be nice to make an arena. Perhaps I'll make individual arenas for each boss, it's something that could fill the time while also serving as a decorative build. Only problem is that I still need to get actuators before these builds can really take shape. For now, I figured I'd blow up a bunch of ebonstone, and I was hoping there'd be more than ebonstone brick that could be crafted, but that's just about it, so I guess that'll have to do. It might have made sense to create the arena from natural ebonstone, as I like builds that fit with the landscape, but this looks good too. I made an initial little tower for the arena. I never fight the Eater of Worlds above the ground, so this will be a whole new experience for me. But hey, that's one of the reasons for this challenge in the first place. Doing things you don't usually do. Finding the worm in the caves has always felt much easier to me, plus it requires less prep time. Now, Evanstone Brick doesn't craft any platforms, so I chopped Evan Wood trees for the arena. Before building the arena though, last month I had an issue with moss. There was a glowing pink moss from a naturally spawning cave, but I wanted it to be green. Paint didn't work, and several people suggested throwing the stuff in an extractinator. Shimmering the moss creates helium moss, no matter what kind you throw in, but if you toss it into an extractinator, it could spit out a different moss, or at least so I'm told. I tried one helium moss and one of the regular pink glowing moss. Both of them sped out one of the regular non-glowing mosses, but neither was green, so I figured it wasn't worth it. I returned to the building up of the arena. For now, it'll be quite simple, but I hope to add more detail when I have actual actuators. Actual? That's weird. There's, e <laughs> There's these ebonstone brick pillars with a layer of platforms. There's more to add, but before that, the goblin army was on its way. There's not much to say about the goblin army, it's kind of just the goblin army. I whacked them with a stick and called it a day. It did feel like it ended really quickly though, not sure if Calamity decreased the amount of enemies you need to kill to defeat the army, or if the modded weapons kill the enemies quicker, whatever the case, it didn't take very long. Defeating the army means finding the goblin tinkerer is always the next step. If you ever struggle with finding him, here's my best advice. Drink a hunter potion, ride the first minecart track you see in the cavern lair, and you'll likely find him in no time, just as I did. Find the Tinker's Workshop from him allowed me to combine a bunch of accessories, which is very, 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 very helpful. So now it's time to return to making the arena. The solid block pillars you would think might be an obstruction for fighting, but a staff dropped by the Goblin Army is most effective when it hits a solid block, more than when it hits the enemy directly. Having these pillars actually should make this weapon more effective. I finished the base of the arena and did a quick fishing quest, which happened to be in the corruption. I'll have to make a bigger fishing hole, feels like this world hardly has any good fishing spots. Really gotta get that bottomless water bucket as soon as possible. I added two more layers to the arena, which you gotta have, right? An arena can't just be one single platform. I also added some campfires and heart lanterns, of course. This means it's time to blow up the final shadow orb and get the first boss of the run. Let's go, 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 go. Oh no. Come on. Up, 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 up. Ugh. Ouch! That took all of my health just to get up here. Oh, now he's shooting. Oh, no, 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 now he's shooting. Ah, da, 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 Oh, I just thought he wasn't going to shoot at all. Oh, are those cursed flames? 
Or are those just bright? Why are they bright? I don't like that they're bright. Nope, nope, uh, oh. Oh! Curse flames! Ah! Uh oh! Uh oh! Houston, we have a problem. Ooh, hearts. Thank you. Okay, so the heads. Oh, let's shoot them. So if we keep the heads to a minimum, we'll be fine. The Eater of Worlds is kind of funny up here on the surface. Suddenly, the big worm can fly and he can make sharp, fast turns. That's probably not a thing in vanilla, but only in Calamity. Seeing the worm turn on a dime is kind of terrifying. I beat the worm first try and then realized I forgot I had planned to use my mage build and the magic staff from the goblin army, so I quickly went back underground to resummon it. As it turns out, however, my major build does not have a horseshoe. Oh, Glamity does allow you to craft horseshoes, however, so once I crafted one, I merged it with a cloud and a balloon and headed back to the corruption. Blowing up a few more orbs, the worm spawned once more and I got to battling. Turns out the worm body blocked the pillars quite frequently, rendering the weapon rather ineffective and the icicle staff doesn't pierce, so it's not great either. My damage output was quite pitiful, and after I died, I have to assume there's better weapons available for me. There was only one weapon I could craft at the moment, but it does have a certain amount of piercing and does adequate damage. I didn't want to summon the worm though, instead I thought it would be a good idea to figure out how I'm going to summon the Brain of Cthulhu. Calamity Mod spawns with a floating island of the opposite evil of the world. I thought this might be enough, but after visiting, I wasn't so sure. There weren't any crimson enemies spawning, and although it's possible that they could, the spawn rate was likely so low that farming would have been a real pain. I tried shimmering rotten chunks into vertebrae with no success, and then wondered if the dryad might sell some, but she does not. She does, however, sell the summon, and he's the best little doggo. Look at him, he's a cute little doggo. Aw, oh, he's a cute one. Oh, he barks. My next idea was to extend the Crimson Sky Island, but the blocks were not spreading, which I suppose should be expected as it's pre-hard mode. Pretty sure there wouldn't be spread, although it would also seem that the blocks that make up this island, although they are crimson, they are not the kind of crimson blocks that spread. They're more decorative, like ebonstone brick. I could be wrong, but I feel pretty sure about this. So the only way I could think of to ensure that the crimson spreads is by purchasing crimson seeds from the dryad. I just got to make an ectomist biome, but after placing lots of tombstones, there's no ectomist. Confused, I kept placing tombstones. I get increasing the tombstone count for an ectomist in multiplayer, but doing so in single player feels weird. If you fail to clean up your tombstones, that's on you. Instead, I'm stuck trying to find a space to put all these tombstones. <laughs> oh, 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 there we go. Oh, I, I almost gave up. I, oh, I was almost given up. Anyways, I was able to place down enough for crimson seeds to be sold by to get the Ectomist and create an artificial crimson above the corrupt biome that has a sky lake above it and that has the crimson floating island above it. Uh, this area of the world going to have layers. <laughs> it didn't take long for enemies to start spawning, and so I can now farm for vertebrae and mushrooms needed for the crimson bosses. Oh, and I almost forgot, I did try shimmering more moss into helium moss and then tossing it into the extractinator. I only tried one before to see if it turned green and it didn't, so I gave up. Well, I tried putting in a bunch more helium moss and did eventually get green, but this, this isn't green. <laughs> How is this green? Guess I need the glowing green moss if I really want that nice green I'm looking for. So I went off to farm more vertebrae, and for some reason I ended up jumping down the corrupt caverns where I just so happened to see a meteor that had fallen earlier. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen a meteor inside a corrupt cavern. It also felt kind of funny mining this thing block by block since I recently was playing a modded run with Ore Excavator, and it's so satisfying seeing a meteor evaporate with that. But nope, not in this run, I'm just going to be here pecking away at this thing. I got enough of the stuffs for a bloody spine, and I had farmed a little extra as I thought I'd need a few summons, but then I realized boss summons and calamity are not consumable. I cleared a few trees I'd planted up there so I could use the wood for an arena, but it occurs to me that this wood is probably the same as what I'd get in the corruption. Am I wrong about that? Honestly, I have no idea. I thought about making the arena, but was anxious to just fight the brain and tried using my mage class. There is a third phase for the brain, and it's kind of just confusing. The brain makes these much bigger moves. In the end, dashing into the thing with the shield of Cthulhu was all it took to avoid taking damage, but I didn't quite have the timing right and ended up dying right before killing it. Although, what made the brain's final phase more difficult was the fact that I can't hardly hit the thing. It moved too fast for my weapons. 
I tried the battle again with the rogue class, and this went a whole lot smoother. Now, perhaps this is a little delayed, but I now got to work on making an arena up here. <laughs> There's still the perforators, I suppose, so it'll at least have some use. I also made it identical to the one in the corruption, or at least very similar, partially because I had no other ideas for a different looking arena, but also because I thought mirroring the arenas just made sense between evil biomes. I just had to paint the Evanstone red to make it look right. When the arena was finished, rather than fighting the perforators, I figured I'd instead get to work on a village I've had in mind since day one. This is one of the main things that was affected by this whole new mindset in approaching this run. I could have easily spawned in the perforator, but I'm going to leave them for next week. Them and the hive mind will give me a little something to do next week, and will help split up every week into more interesting chunks, I think. So, on to the build. I started with a simple hut. The whole idea for this build is to make it like a marsh or swamp town with wooden houses built into the trees. It won't quite be marshy, I just want it to look pretty much like a long lost paradise. Maybe that's a better description of it. Getting the second house then helped me figure out how the structure of this build is going to work. I added a hole below the huts where an eventual pond will be and put some of the more natural stone walls around it. If you saw my series last year, you will recognize where this build is going as it's in many ways very similar to a build I had in that one. That's pretty intentional as that build was made really late in the run and yet it was one of my favorite builds of all time. I didn't get any time to enjoy it so now I'm recreating it here where I will have lots of time. I built the third and largest house and extended some of the stone wall to flush out the backdrop. I then added the dirt and the stone top to give the thing a more cavernous appearance. I also discovered placing dirt underneath the wooden stilts and then planting it helped it look a bit more natural. Now the water isn't just going to be at the bottom, but rather I wanted to put continuously falling water on the top, which obviously means there needs to be a little basin up here. There are several techniques for creating the appearance of falling water, but I wanted actual water to keep falling, and so I might actually use pumps. A rather forgotten wiring tool if you ask me. I then removed the natural dirt wall and made my own that is a bit closer to the ground. I even used living leaf walls to create the sort of mossy look growing on the outside of the other walls and I think it's actually quite convincing. And at last, it's probably going to be quite dark in the water, but I want it to be bright and pristine, so I added two diamond gem spark walls to brighten the place up. I just can't wait until I can get my hands on echo paints and a bottomless water bucket to really complete this build. And something else that needs completion is your subscription status. See, at the end of the year, I will be firing one mini nuke 2 from this rocket launcher for every subscriber I have. So help me blow up a fresh small world into smithereens by subscribing and joining me on this year-long journey. Week 6, here we come, or week 2 of the month, I suppose. It feels nice still to have two more bosses to fight, and it occurs to me I was running out of things to do last month when I had to go through the whole getting started process of collecting gear and materials and that takes a good chunk of time. I'm really going to have to be more creative with what I do and boy did I find that something special this week. We'll get to it a little bit later in the week, but there's a few things to take care of first, such as fishing quests. I need a bottomless water bucket, as I've mentioned plenty of times, to finish the build from last week. Without the water feature, it just doesn't quite feel right, but I'm still happy with it. Yes, this is what it's like having a build you're proud of. Early game. This, this is very nice. First things first, we do have another boss to fight, and I wanted to start this week with a little bit of action, and so I headed to the Artificial Crimson to break a perforator cyst and fight the perforator. Calamity bosses, although I have fought them before, I'm significantly less familiar with, and their patterns are a little more mysterious to me, so I wasn't sure how things were going to go in this battle. Thing is, though, the boss was actually really easy. I didn't have great piercing with which to kill the worms he summons, but I was able to dodge around the worms well enough to get adrenaline a few times. The boss was just pretty simple. A few sparky things shot from the brain, looking thing, dodge around the charging worms, and you're fine. Plus, you don't actually have to kill the worms, you just have to kill the main body and you're all good. So that checks another boss off the list, real cool. None of the drops were particularly exciting, although this one summon was gross, so I have to mention it. I refuse to use the Crimson Heart Light Pet because I think it looks gross, and the same applies here. I don't want this pulsating sack of flesh following me everywhere. Plus, I'm pretty sure my eye summon is better anyways than this summon. And no matter what summon weapons I found, I always seem to find that the eye summon was the most powerful, but that doesn't feel right. One biome I failed to explore last month is the Abyss. Not sure there's a whole lot down here, but I might as well check it out and see what is here. 
In the end, there wasn't much, but there were some points of interest. Oh, wow, these chests are actually kind of hard to see. But we got one. We got one. All right, where's, where are the others? I feel like I've probably missed some. I did find some more treasure, but nothing particularly interesting. I did learn that I can place torches down here since there's torch variants that work in the abyss, and with Torch God's favor, they automatically turn into the appropriate torch. I found it quite odd how the left side of the abyss generated as there were a bunch of blocks spread about seemingly randomly. I thought it would be a solid wall, not this weird mess. Weird. I also figured it'd be fun to see just how deep I could go. Let's just keep going deeper and see what happens. Oh. Oh, they all explode. No, why? Oh, wait, wait, maybe this one doesn't. Oh, oh, it glows red a little bit if it will explode. Oh, oh, oh I figured, I figured it out. We're still going. <laughs> we, we, we got pretty far down there, I think. Let's see. Let's, let's look at the map. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got real far. That's pretty good. I spent a little while also trying to figure out this mob called the Cannonball Jellyfish. Oh, that's what those do. Oh. I didn't actually learn my lesson because I immediately died to the next one. Oh, for some inexplicable reason, this jellyfish fascinated me and I wanted to figure out why it was killing me. So I tried a theory I had. I am, boy, aha, ha, ha, I figured him out. <laughs> so apparently these things, once you get them low enough, they'll become immune to damage and charge the player. And if they hit you at this point of progression, it's death. If they miss, they'll die and drop bombs because apparently the internal organs of these jellies are explosives. The only other interesting thing that happened down here is that there were these chests I couldn't open and no key icon appeared when I hovered over them. I spent a while trying to figure out how to crack them open, but chat was telling me I can't get them until after Skeletron. Okay, so now we can get to that super fun project I mentioned a little bit earlier. I want to kill a dungeon guardian. I've done this maybe once before, many years ago after they added the bone key drop to these auto killing spinning skulls. I forgot to kill one in the vanilla run last year, so this year I wanted to make a point of taking one of these down. So I started mining straight down into the dungeon, which will make it a lot easier to flee when the guardians spawn, but none were spawning, so I figured I'd run down into the dungeon and figure out how deep I needed to go. Wait, what? Wait, what is happening right now? What? There, there he is! And so I started mining deeper, but as it would turn out, I mined straight into regular caves and had to dig even deeper to get to even more dungeon. The thing is, I found a gold key in this wooden chest earlier, and well, hold up, hold up, I have the key on me. <laughs> I'm going for it. Turns out I can't mine the dungeon brick down here with a golden pickaxe. So I stopped, made the pickaxe one tier higher, the death bringer, and that's also not strong enough. Guess I need a molten pickaxe. Last year I didn't mine Hellstone till after Skeletron because I wanted to get more life out of the Crimtain armor, but I want to fight the dungeon guardian, so I'm mining Hellstone. It also occurs to me, since I'm not running a melee build, I probably won't really need any of the Hellstone anyways, but I mined extra just in case. Right as I was finishing mining, I spotted an Ashen Stalactite just lying around. It's an underworld rogue weapon, so it's pretty good. The demon I killed with it immediately after just so happened to drop a demon scythe as well, so I'm pretty stacked. Oh, voodoo. Voodoo. Gimme, 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 gimme. Don't fall in the lava. Oh wait, that's another one! No, 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 no! Ah! Oh. Well, that works! <laughs> now I got a Molten Pickaxe and immediately got sidetracked. I mined more obsidian and as I went to craft water walking boots, as that should theoretically be easier than finding them. See, Calamity adds a recipe for the water walking boots, but I need leather. The only enemy I know that drops leather is some dog in the tundra. There was a blizzard, which I thought would be good because I wasn't sure if blizzards were required for the dogs to spawn, but you see, there's a problem here. It's a blizzard at night and the clock is nearing midnight. At midnight during a blizzard, your cough spawns naturally. And I totally forgot about this until someone in chat reminded me and I was playing it really close. Ah, all right, we gotta get out, we gotta get out. Go, 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 go. Oh, come on, <laughs> right in the middle of a second. <laughs> I'm doing really bad at bosses spawning here. 
Ah, yes. Quality content right here. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> well, huh. I teleported to the ocean for the heck of it, and Calamity adds this real handy feature where Deer Clops makes everything dark, and that's absolutely fantastic because Deer Clops doesn't despawn after dying. An easy solution to this problem would be saving and exiting, but I feel like I should live with the consequences of my actions in, in this run. <laughs> I went back to face the deer, but I'm not actually allowed to attack your clop since this part of progression has not been unlocked, so I'm just stuck staring at this thing or else living in total darkness. At least, that's what I thought, because after I died, everything got just a little bit brighter, so we could just go about our business. <laughs> On the bright side, but um, Deer Clops does naturally despawn. It just takes 24 real life minutes. <laughs> Deer, Cl Deer Clops, what are you doing down there, buddy? What, what are you doing in the hole? Deer Clops, you need help. So I just had to burn 24 minutes doing miscellaneous things. None of it was particularly important, mostly because I didn't want to do important things while the screen was this dark because that wouldn't be fun for this video. <gasps> there it is! Ah, oh, he's finally left! Oh wow, the game is is so different now. This is what Terraria looks like? Whoa! I really had adjusted to playing in the dark. It felt kind of weird when the colors returned. <laughs> Time to return to my dungeon guardian shenanigans. First things first, I need to get that one golden chest. The world has gifted me with the ability to sequence break and gosh darn it, I'm going to take it. I had to die several times just to get inside, but once the wall was mined completely away, I was free to dash in and grab the loot. All right, all right. Here we go. Yes! 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 Aqua Scepter, baby! Let's go! Oh, that's sick. I'm gonna have to use Aqua Scepter against Skeletron. That's gonna be so much fun. That makes me so happy. I mined a little deeper and breached the dungeon enough for Guardians to spawn with a straight shot back to the surface. Problem is, when I tried that, the Guardian immediately caught up to me. But that makes no sense. The Dungeon Guardian doesn't move faster than the player in Freefall. Did Calamity increase their movement speed? They had to. And if they did, how could I possibly kill the thing? I tried again, and it failed. I need a new strategy. I grabbed a bunch of accessories that increase movement speed, including crafting a Magiluminescence. Try saying that five times faster. <laughs> Problem is, this increases horizontal movement speed, not vertical. So, I need to do some thinking, and I figured I'd mine the newly available Aerolite. This ore spawns in with the world, but can't be mined until the Perforator or Hive Mine have been killed. There's wings that can be made to the stuff, but as would turn out, more importantly, this armor has a set bonus that increases my fall speed. That also gives me a whole bunch of extra movement speed and other things. So now, I might just be able to take down the Dungeon Guardian. Turns out though, I can actually move fast enough now for them to despawn, but that wasn't the worst revelation. What? <gasps> it's shooting skull. This changes everything. Vanilla Guardians only kill by touching you. But these shoot insta-kill skulls with minor amounts of homing. I tried a few more times, but made no progress. So, time to formulate a new game plan. Before that, I wanted to kill the hive mind, the final boss available in February. The boss battle, however, didn't go how I thought it would. His pattern is different than I thought it was, and so I made several mistakes there, but it also felt tankier and did more damage than the perforator had done, which strikes me as odd. I nearly beat the thing first try, but ended up dead, and so I shrugged my shoulders and returned to the easier enemy, the Dungeon Guardian, but I was still going nowhere fast with the Guardians. The tunnels I'm flying up has no room to dodge, so once a skull is shot down the chute, I have no way of avoiding it, which means the obvious solution is to expand the size of the tunnel. And now back to Hive Mind. I fought it twice more and lost both times, doing worse than the first battle. There's a number of problems I'm running into. For one, it's shooting cursed flame orbs that I can hardly see, but also, it keeps spawning in enemies, and as I try to dash away from the main body, it'll spawn an enemy right in front of me, so I'll bounce off the enemy and back into the main body. This whole time, the battle isn't feeling right, and someone from chat was telling me the boss was actually enraged, but I didn't believe it. There's no way the hive mind enrages on the surface, but there is one way to verify, by turning the health bar into the Calamity version. See, with this health bar, the boss's name gets outlined in red when it's enraged, and sure enough, it's red. So, this whole time, I've been fighting the boss 
in a rage. Well, that's great. I killed it anyways. <laughs> Maybe this means Dungeon Guardian Battle will go better. Well, perhaps not. See, turns out this armor makes me move too fast for the Dungeon Guardians, and they keep on despawning, as I, I alluded to earlier. The only way to prevent this was to reverse gravity again, and this total stop of momentum caused me to die. And the one time I did get out of the dungeon without dying... Oh, come on! No! No! We, ah, I actually got out! So to make it easier to dodge the skulls, I increased the size of the gap even more, and for the first time, I was able to get the Dungeon Guardian out into the open. Oh! No! 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 We got out! We got out! No! As frustrating as this is, it does mean it's possible. I also realized that I couldn't switch back to my rogue build once out. I wanted to use that build because my rogue weapon is insanely fast, which works best against the guardians, but I no longer get the advantage of falling extra fast, which I need. I tried again and again with many failures and a few successes, but each time I got the guardian outside, it would shoot skulls and the skulls were so hard to dodge I'd almost die immediately. And the discombobulating nature of reversing gravity made it all the much harder to dodge. I could get it outside the dungeon, but I wasn't able to survive very long after, and I'd burned through all my gravitation potions and ingredients for gravitation potions, and the week was coming to a close. So I guess this will become a project next week. With my remaining time, I added a new larger garden and actually used the appropriate planter box for each plant rather than just buying a bunch of one. I also haven't been very happy with how my trophy room looked. Mostly just the background wall around them. I messed with a few things until I settled on alternating voidstone walls and blue gem spark. I think I like it enough to stick with this. The only problem is that Voidstone can only be mined with an Adamantite pickaxe or something around that tier. So the only way for me to actually get Voidstone is by killing a very specific enemy in the Abyss who isn't necessarily a common spawn. So leave it to me to choose one of the single hardest materials to gather. That's just wonderful. So as it would turn out, last week I started a journey I was not ready for. The Dungeon Guardian must fall, and I was so determined to do that, I regret my life decisions. And you'll find out why as we go along. I had a serious problem last week escaping the Dungeon Guardian after getting it out of the dungeon. I was at least able to get it out of the dungeon, but now we need to find a way to better survive on the surface because gravitation potions, although viable, mess with my head so much that I can't hardly dodge the Guardian's projectiles. The first step in the process was creating a massive platform that extends most of the world. I already know I wasn't able to quite outrun the Guardian last week, but I have a few ideas for increasing my movement speed. First things first, I need a bunch of feathers for gravitation potions as well as aerospec armor for the rogue class, which I only realized existed this week. Switching between mage to rogue was not fun last week, and now that I realized that there was a rogue set, this made it a lot easier. I was also able to snag a water candle from the dungeon to increase harpy spawns to make the grind session a little less, well, grindy. I equipped the magic luminescence as well, and I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, okay. Now, now we're cooking. We're, we are, we are cooking, all right? We can do this. We're about to kill a dungeon guardian, baby. We're going to do it. It's, it's going to happen, I'm telling you. There's no way I could possibly lose. Easy, 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 easy money. Alright, it didn't spawn. We'll, we'll try it again. It didn't spawn again. There he is. There's our buddy. Or, or, oh! Okay, that, that skull, that, 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 he cheated right there. Alright, that, that was cheating. He, that's what Skeletron, I mean, the Dungeon Guardian just did right there. He cheated, you see, because the, the skull moved more than normal. It, that... Uh, that was cheating, all right? <laughs> so that didn't quite go as planned. I just need to get him out of the dungeon to really see whether I can outrun him. And sure enough, on the second attempt, I got him out of the dungeon. Oh, we're still, we're too slow. Oh, we're still too slow, no. Oh, this movement speed for nothing. Nothing. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, let's just blindly try it again. <laughs> you got this. Don't you dare! Oh, I just jumped! I jumped right into that. that. Wow. Okay, they have that has more. The hitbox is bigger than I thought it was. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's so, come on! You can't just spot on my face. Yeah, I know the game doesn't want me to kill it. That's one reason why we're going to kill it. Game can't tell me what to do. I'll do what I want. Darn it. Okay. Okay. 
Here we go. Oh! I'm moving at the same speed as the arch. Okay, so... Ooh, okay. If I move at the same speed as the arch of the skull... Oh, what am I going to do about that? That didn't turn out too well. And so the next strategy had to be formed. The skull shot from the dungeon guardian had an arc to them, and its arc was shooting in such a way that if I ran straight at full speed, it would hit me. But slowing down is not an option either. But even when I tried to get good with the gravity reversing, I just couldn't outrun the guardian. So I need to go faster. First step was reforging every accessory I had to quick for 4% extra movement speed for every accessory. Calamity also makes it so reforging is much easier and a lot cheaper. The accessories never downgrade, so once you hit the highest reforge tier, you will only get highest tier reforges. It's very convenient. I am also doing fishing quests when I remember in a vain attempt to get the bottomless water bucket from the angler, but he is not giving it to me. I've armed some more for potions and tried the guardians again, but am still far too slow. So what can I do to increase my movement speed? Well, let's introduce the Dune Rider boots. These boots are extra fast when running on sand, including sandstone. So if it's enough of a boost, I could replace the entire platform in the sky with sandstone. I just need to test the speed boost. All right, we're at 41. We're not going any faster. Wait, what? 49. Okay, we go to, yeah, it's, it's the same. Wait, what? Oh, I don't have them on. Aha, 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 aha. When I fixed that, these boots went a whole 4 miles per hour faster than the regular ones. But I still want more speed, so I went to the jungle to collect jungle spores for an Ankle to win. See, Calamity adds a recipe to craft the Ankle to win. It requires more than just jungle spores, but it's the only part of the recipe I don't currently have. This will boost my movement speed by another 10%. I did toy with using frozen slime blocks as well. These frictionless blocks can really get you moving, but with where we are in progression, I'd have to grapple and disable the hook at just the right time, and it's already hard enough getting the guardian out of the dungeon, so I wasn't confident I could consistently get the hook just right, so I stuck with the sand. Before fully committing to the idea and replacing all the platforms, I placed the sand and made enough of a runway to get the general feel for it and also put down sunflowers below, and those sunflowers also gave me another 2 miles per hour. This is by far the fastest I have ever moved in pre-hard mode, but I'm still not sure it's going to be fast enough. I summon the guardian again, and this is the moment I fully locked into this idea. <gasps> oh! Oh! And it's not shooting either. Oh, okay, okay. We just need a few more miles per hour. Just a few more. We have it. We have it. We have a shot. We have a shot. And so I conducted a bombing campaign in the desert, shimmered a jelly accessory into vital jelly which increases movement speed by 12%, and farmed for more feathers because it was a blood moon and because a harpy ring can be made with feathers. This ring gives me yet another 10% movement speed. Now that I am fully committed to this idea, I replaced the platforms with sandstone and spread some flowers throughout it so I'd never be without one. And so, it was time for the moment of truth. Alright, he's up. <gasps> Oh, he's still a little bit faster. I do have the pots. Oh, no. Oh, he's still a little faster. Ah, yeah, I can't. Mm. No. Oh, I didn't equip the harpy ring. Okay, okay, hold on. That can, that can give us another. Okay, okay. I am also using swiftness potions to increase my movement speed by 15%. I was so close that last time, but maybe another 10% from the harpy ring will put me just over the edge. Okay, here we go, here we go. I even have the harpy ring. It's still faster! It's still faster! Get out! <laughs> I considered using shadow scale armor as it's known for increasing movement speed, but it turns out aerospec actually increases my movement speed even more than shadow scale, so that's not a viable strategy either. All I ended up changing was grabbing some bacon. <laughs> it gives major improvements to all stats, including movement speed, and maybe it'll give me just enough of that little boost I need. Alright, and it's out. And... Oh, that might be it! We're going the same speed! We got it! We got it! We got it! We got it! We can do this! Okay, okay! Wait a minute. No! 
No. Oh no! No slimes! No! If you looked closely, you could see the dungeon guardian might have been very slowly catching up to me, but I'm not all that concerned about that. Right now I need to figure out how to avoid slimes and other enemies. Having any enemy in the way will stop my momentum entirely and jumping over them is not an option as it causes me to lose speed as well. I didn't like it, but I switched the Luxor's gift with the royal gel. This will make me immune to slimes and that'll be great, but it will also be reducing my damage considerably. It's not ideal, but this is more of a test to see if the Guardian really does still move faster than me or not. Alright, he's following us out. Oh, I do think he is just a pixel faster than me. I think he is. He is so ever so slowly catching up to me. No! No! I have so much extra movement speed! No! 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 <laughs> Get away! Get away! No! 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 Get away from me! Get away! <laughs> I'm still just a little too slow. I'm not sure what to do. I kept messing around with all the accessories I could think of to increase my movement speed, but nothing was substantial enough to make the difference I needed. Now some people in chat mentioned using hoiks, and for those of you who might be thinking the same thing, I refuse to use hoiks on principle. I know Relogic has deemed them intended gameplay, but I personally don't like them, so I refuse to use them. Desperate for ideas, I considered using minecart rails. These are definitely fast enough, but their acceleration is pitiful. This is why I haven't tried using them yet, because I was certain they wouldn't go fast enough, but I decided to give it a try. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, not even close. And that brings me to the end of the week already. There was a lot of grinding and a lot of failures that I didn't mention. The number of times I've actually summoned this thing is quite staggering. And so is the sheer number of potions wasted in my futile attempt to kill it. But there is one more strategy. There's a weapon called the Old Lord's Oath Sword that drops from Bone Serpents. This weapon launches you like a cannon and so it might be able to be used in a minecart to get that initial acceleration I need, or else I can use it to put distance between myself and the Guardian after inches a little too close. I can hardly believe I spent the whole week just trying to kill this thing, and still haven't managed to accomplish it, and after 15 minutes of grinding in the underworld, I didn't even get a bone serpent to spawn, so I didn't get the sword, so I guess I'll have to return to this next week. Okay. Fresh eyes and a new look at how to overcome this great challenge. I'm not going to go through the brainstorming that happened in my Discord or anything like that because it's not that interesting, but I'm sure some of you are thinking about a certain strategy posited by a video or two where the player used several variants of speedy boots, and as I'm sure there'd be plenty of people trying to point me to this video, I just wanted to say that it was attempted, but Calamity actually alters the way that these boots function. so. They don't stack on top of each other, thus making the strategy implausible. What changes am I going to make? Well, I abandoned the Oath Sword idea, and the change that I am going to make is actually really small. We're going to equip the Panic Necklace. This lovely little accessory greatly increases your speed after taking damage, and in testing, it increased my speed by a whopping 5 miles per hour, which should certainly push me over the necessary hurdle to outrun the Dungeon Guardian. Of course, you may be wondering, how I'm going to take damage for that speed bonus when the Dungeon Guardian one-shots me, and hitting other enemies can stop my all-important momentum. The answer is quite simple. I need spikes. Let's try this. That didn't get me much. <laughs> of course, gathering them won't exactly be a simple task. Oh, darn it. Ah! It was kind of funny, really, because dungeons always are filled with spikes, and yet I'm not seeing hardly any of them near where I am. I could mine around and find more, I'm sure, but I shouldn't actually need a whole lot of spikes. I can space them out pretty far at the speeds I'm moving. I did notice a potential problem, though, while testing with a few spikes I had collected. I took a solid 40 to 50 damage every time I walked over one of these spikes, and considering how the Dungeon Guardian battle will take a while, I'll be running over a lot of spikes and taking a lot of damage. This can be mitigated with potions, but we'll have to see. 
So I gathered spikes, which wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do. Ow! Throw. Awesome. New strategy to kill the dungeon guardian. Ow! It's right there! I only ended up with 15 spikes, but I'm fairly certain that will be enough. A blood moon didn't make the process of setting up this whole arena, I guess we'll call it, any easier, so I placed all the spikes, facing them out as much as possible, and then farmed for more feathers to craft gravitation potions, and headed to the dungeon to see if we've at last cracked this puzzle. Okay, okay, we're fine, we're fine. Yes! Alright, here we go. <gasps> yes, we're faster! We're faster! Yes! Oh, stop it! Okay, okay, we got... Oh, right, right, right. Watch for the skulls. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Extra speed. Get us some distance. Watch the, watch the enemies. What? What was that? What? Okay, I think I know what it was. What I thought it was was the Dungeon Guardian shooting a single skull when it went through the platforms. I swear I've seen this before, but that's not what actually happened when looking back at it. But it's definitely what I thought it happened, and so I've spent the next 10 minutes replacing all the platforms with solid blocks. Will this make any actual difference? I don't think so, but it makes me feel better. Oh! What? What? There he is. All right. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm even slowing down a little bit to make sure that we keep pace with him. All right, all right. Gotta keep an eye behind me for enemies like that. Go down, fast. No! Ah! Stop making stupid mistakes. Go oh, like that. Oh, yeah, this is the perfect music for this. It's really getting... No! Oh, we only got three left. Oh, I actually... Oh, oh, come on! Oh, come on! Oh! Potion. Go. Oh, it's above me! Did you see that, Corb? Did you see that? That cheating! It cheated! It cheated! Cheating, dungeon guardians aside, I am still short on potions once more, so I farm more feathers and return to the task. At this point, I spent some five or six hours on this single task, all to defeat the Dungeon Guardian. I poured in blood, sweat and tears, mostly tears. I tried again and again, but actually got on a good run. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. No! Ah! Ah, the slime! No! Okay, clearly enemies are going to be a problem. Even if they don't hit me, jumping to avoid them can be an issue, as it'll let the Dungeon Guardian shoot skulls, and to avoid a skull I need to jump again, letting it shoot again, and it's a vicious cycle. So I replaced my Harpy Ring, sacrificing a little speed for immunity to slimes, and this one switch changed everything. 1,000. Come on, 800. Uh, now 800. Come on. Seven. Six. Come on. Five. Four. Come on. Three. Two. One. Those definitely were not the sounds of a man losing his mind, but I proved that it's 100% doable. So I extended the platform and moved on to another attempt. All right, all right, all right. Here it comes, here it comes. All right, here we go. Round two. Well, <laughs> it's a bit more than that. <laughs> but we increased the length of the thing. We should be fine, all right? We should be fine. We will be fine, all right? You know what? It's not even, not even a question. We will be fine. Wait, I have the fungal clump. Wait, why do I have the fungal clump? Why do I have the fungal clump? <laughs> you shouldn't be here. I mean, I'm, uh, 
I'll take it. All right, we got a 2,000. Don't need to worry about the slime. Every time I see one, I am, I'm, I'm about to jump. Then I remember I don't need to. All right, halfway. We got this. Come on. Come on. 1,000. Eight. Or I guess nine. Now it's eight. Okay. Oh, that does actually feel like it's doing more. Seven. Okay. Six. Come on. Five. Come on. Come on. Four. Yes. Yes. Three. Yes. Yes. Two. Come on. One. And. 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 Yes. Yes. Oh, we got it. We got it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> we got him! We got him! Yes! <laughs> At last, it is done! Seven hours to kill this thing, and literally a half hour more cleaning up this massive mess, but I've beaten a dungeon guardian, and not just that, a calamity dungeon guardian, baby. It is leagues more deadly than the vanilla one, all right? That's that's an accomplishment. To commemorate the moment, I switched out the dummy above the storage with the full armor and loadout that took down the guardian as an eternal reminder of what was accomplished this day. Going to be honest, though, I had no idea what to do after this. <laughs> I had just planned on fighting the Guardian, so I went on a fishing quest as I need the bottomless water bucket for that build, and as it so happened, that was the quest to get me one. Oh, it's a good day! Bottomless water bucket! It gave me two, which had me curious if Calamity made it so I could shimmer one, but I could not. Why did it give me two of these? Who needs two bottomless water buckets? Whatever the reason may be, I added water to the build. Still need the part in the above section, but I'm going to need wiring to get the whole effect I'm looking for, so that'll happen next month. And so now, with the remaining time, I figured I'd get to work on some building. Last month, I thought about replacing this crane with a crystal drill, combining these two builds here. So I tore down the crane and got to work. I started off making an outline for the drill bit, which looks pretty promising if you ask me. I painted the copper plating black and added walls, smoothed the whole thing out, and I guess it looks okay. It looks more like a dentist tool than an actual industrial drill at this point. I tried adding an outline with Wolfram plating, but I'm not super happy with it. It's a little too bulky at the head, so I slimmed it down. It's fine, I guess, but still needs some work. I'm just not sure how to improve it with my meager skills. The rest of the house the drill is on should be brought into its more techy theming though, so the gray brick was replaced with Wolfram plating and the wood with sun plate painted gray. The wood walls were replaced with lab walls, I painted the furniture sky blue, which I had also done to the Wolfram plating around the drill. It kind of complements the sea prism stone drill bit and adds a splash of color. I also ended up putting in some random lab tech stuff. It looks... I hate this build. <laughs> Maybe not hate it. I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I added rusted pipes and painted them gray, which helps tie the drill and the building together, I think. It was only now that somebody mentioned there's a bunch of Wolfram building materials that look a whole lot better than a painted wooden chair. It's a blood moon, so I know it's not easy to see, but trust me, it looks a lot better. I've also gotten a stupidly high number of blood moons this run. It feels like they're every other night. Now, one reason I had combined the crystal with the drill was to open up more space for this swampy living wood building because I wanted it to be more of a, a full village rather than a single isolated spot. I tried to make it look similar to the others that had been built prior, but it's also meant to be a, the sort of like main house, so it's also different. There was yet another blood moon as I was building, see see what I mean with these things happening all the time? I like how I framed the one window with platforms above and below it, but I wish there were vertical platforms or something. Skipping past the blood moon because it's hard to see, here's the final result. I want to continue upgrading it as time goes along, but this is a really good foundation and can definitely be left as is if I don't know what else to add. And at this point, I just messed around in magic storage, seeing what can be crafted. I found a few weapons that were easily craftable, a few which were at least on tier. Calamity also makes it really easy to get Terra Spark boots, so I made one pair of those and two pairs of Frost Sparks. I only need two more pairs of water walking boots to get Terra Sparks for the other two builds, but crafting those requires water walking potions in Calamity, and making those requires shark fins, and of course, those suck to farm, and I'm out of time. 
that's February, and we'll get to move on to March now. The dungeon and Skeletron is the only real progression coming in March. The other bosses are kind of just bosses who don't really unlock anything. But hey, another month and the final month in free hard mode, so that's exciting.